Hey guys, another video for our buying a house in Japan playlist. Some of you guys are familiar with this big storeroom at the back of the old Japanese farmhouse. Up in the rafters are these piles of cut timber, roughly cut timber. And over in this corner is a big pile of polystyrene foam. So these things have been here since we moved in 10 years ago. So that timber up there in particular has never been touched. It's just been sitting up there gathering dust. So we've always wondered what we could do with it that was worthwhile. Now, that ceiling there is wood with mud on it and then tiles on that. So very well insulated, pretty good in summer, stays pretty cool. This roof here is the silver roof that you guys saw recently. The top of it's silver. So it's just tin. So in summer, the heat comes straight through that tin. You can feel it generating down at you. So we thought if we got this wood from up in the rafters and the polystyrene from over there in the corner, we might be able to do something with it. So first step was to get all this dusty, dusty wood down. So I got the unskilled labourer up a ladder, said, fetch that wood. So... <laughs> Like lots of other things in the in the old house, the old man had tied tied string around everything. So these things were in little little packs. Now, interestingly, the wood, the pieces of wood, were actually identical. As you take them apart, they were identical to each other, which meant that he'd had them milled, and the pieces of wood that were cut up from the tree were side by side were from beside each other so all the knots lined up and all that sort of thing so you could actually put them back together again and see what the tree looked like so what we're doing here is separating into like a one two three so the, the best ones together and then the second best ones together and then the third ones off to the side so some of them were pretty nice pieces of wood other ones had big splits through them and big knots and so on and some just fell apart broken half as we picked them up so it would seem he's had them milled and then they've been sitting up in the rafters curing, drying maybe. He might have had a plan for them. So they've been up there for maybe 20 years or more, 30, who knows. But at least 20. So the polystyrene's been up there a while too, pretty dusty. So get all that down. When you recycle things in Japan, you can't recycle the polystyrene. They won't accept it. So they just, you go throw it out in your general rubbish, which means it gets burnt, which is really, really bad for the environment, isn't it? So first step was to mark the distance between those, whatever you call those things, those bits of wood, just marking it straight onto another bit of wood and also the height of them to give us the dimensions. So, okay, it can be this thick and it can be this wide. So rather than use a tape measure, it's just much easier just to hold a stick up, hold a stick to it. No, that's too thick, that's too wide, that's about right. And just go through and sort them all out. Cut them, cut the ones that need to be cut. So a pretty easy job. This part of the process, fairly straightforward. And then boxes like that, yeah, just cut the sides off. We, over the years, we have used them a little bit. When we used to sell stuff on eBay, we'd cut them up sometimes and use them to pack things in, things that were delicate. So we have used the little bits and pieces of the polystyrene over the years, but not much. And, and a lot of them are really dirty, so we wouldn't use them for anything like that anyway. So hadn't really come up with a good good use for them until now. And then just squaring up one end of those planks because interestingly both ends were rough <laughs> usually when you get timber like that one end at least is okay isn't it is square but in this case both ends were not square they were pretty roughly cut pretty roughly cut we'd guess he's probably got them straight from the mill just by the fact that all the pieces were still side by side and then he tied them together and put them in the rafters. So that sort of sounds like that, doesn't it? Bought them from the mill, tied them up, put them in the rafters to dry. So just cutting one end off. Can't measure what we need because where it's going does tend to vary a bit. So this is what the weather was like. The start of a sort of a bit of a mini rainy season. 
Actually, there was typhoons. There was two typhoons nearby creating that weather. So it was pretty windy and occasionally pretty rainy. So, let's do it. So put the polystyrene in the spaces. Now, sometimes it fitted pretty nicely like that one. Other times it didn't. We figured it didn't really matter. It was going to make a difference anyway. And interestingly, you could feel it straight away. Just doing that, just putting those pieces up there in a piece of wood there, you could feel it was cooler. Where it hadn't been done yet, you could feel the heat generating through the, through the tin, even on a cloudy day. So you're getting the idea. Some of those pieces were really, really bowed, split, big knots in them, but fairly thin. It was probably about five mil, something like that. So fairly flexible. So the ones that had bows and, and other dodgy bits in them could sort of flatten them out. And then lots of nails, lots of those little 30 mil nails, boom, 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 keep it nice and, and flat. Likewise with the splits, just sort of pushed them back together and just put lots of nails in to keep it together. So it doesn't really matter. Again, it's the old farmhouse. This isn't being done for aesthetic reasons. Nobody really looks up there anyway. It's purely just to try and get the temperature down, just to make some use from this stuff that's otherwise rubbish. And hopefully in summer when, when we're under here, it'll be a little bit cooler. Interestingly too, we noticed a big difference when it rained. Because usually when it rains, obviously on that tin roof, it's pretty noisy under there, like a drum. But after doing this, it got much quieter, which is really good. Because on a rainy day, that's a good place to be out there. So if it's a little bit less noisy. I mean, it is nice to hear rain on a tin roof, isn't it? It is. But it did get a bit ridiculous when the rain was heavy. <laughs> you couldn't hear each other. So you'll notice the quality of the wood is getting lower and lower as we're going up. Weren't really sure, didn't measure this up at all to work out if we had enough to do the whole ceiling. Just started doing it. Just figured there was a lot of it. Figured if we only got half done, it wouldn't matter. Ran out of polystyrene about now. Again, didn't matter. <laughs> Could go and buy more. They do actually sell it at the home center, sheets of it, but that would defeat the purpose, wouldn't it? The whole idea of this was just to use materials that weren't being otherwise used and put them to some sort of good use. So at this part of the operation, only 800 yen, which is about $8, had been spent for a box of nails for the nail gun, $8. So it's a satisfying thing when the materials are free. And they've gone from being just a dusty pile up in the rafters of that other room to actually being something worthwhile up here. So sunny day again. Obviously this is all done between real work. So that's why the, the fat man's clothes keep changing. <laughs> it's not a fashion show. It's just a different day. If only, it, if only it happened this quick. It was about, until this point, was two, uh, two full days probably to get to this point. It was a bit of faffing around to get all the sizes right. Sometimes we had to actually cut them lengthways to get them to fit. As you'll see there, you can see that last row is going to be too narrow, isn't it, for those sheets? So they had to be cut lengthways with the saw, which is pretty tricky. But turned out all right. Now have a look at this. Have a look at this. In one this corner, there was one piece needed, and that was what was left there lying on the ground. One long piece that had cracked in half, and one short piece that was a bit bowed. That's what was left out of those mountains of wood. Isn't that amazing? And that's what was required there, so it just fitted. Which raises the question, did he buy that wood? Did he buy that wood to do this job? Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Because it was just, just enough. There was a couple of split pieces that we couldn't use. But other than that, it was pretty well just about the right amount. So 
we're often getting safety advice by from different people. So a couple of people complained last night or commented last time that the unskilled labourer shouldn't be doing painting, spray painting without a face mask. And someone also pointed out that we'd found this new, brand new, in a packet. The packet was really dusty and dirty, but it was sealed up. And inside was this immaculate, brand new face mask, never been used. So... Yes, it did make sense to pra to get it out of the bag and use it. It did make sense, yes. <laughs> so it was a pretty rainy, windy week. This is a pretty good place to be working. But get ready for some noise. It's going to be a bit, a bit noisy. going to give you a bit of an idea of what the weather was doing this particular day. This is about day four or something. So get ready for some noise because it was a bit windy and rainy. Here it comes. So again, it was interesting because that, that sort of amount of rain usually under this roof would have been like a like a, a bunch of really noisy tin drums. But once this job was done, once it got to this point, it was it wasn't too bad. It was pretty pretty good. It was cooler too. We've had days that were like thirty eight degrees, and obviously with this rain, it brought the temperature down, made it a little bit cooler, which is sort of nice. It hasn't finished either, it's still raining. Probably another few days of that, and then, then probably autumn weather will start. So get ready for another strange sight and a strange noise. Here it comes. Mm, I am your father. That's just silly, isn't it? Anyway, <laughs> when you do do long jobs like this, you get into your own little zone. So there was all sorts of silly behavior like that going on. <laughs> Doing the Darth Vader breathing thing. Very silly, very silly indeed. So I never know how much of this to show you, you know. There was hours and hours and hours of this video, of course, the putting up the timber and the cutting it and the painting and hours and hours and hours and hours. It's always hard. Some people say they'd watch the whole thing at re in real time, <laughs> sit for 30 hours or something and watch this job. Other people probably wouldn't, so hard to know where to edit it to. So anyway, here's the before and after again. That's what it looked like before. This isn't the most spectacular before and after because it's not really an, an, an aesthetic thing, is it? It's more of a feel thing, feeling the temperature and, and hearing the sound. But you can see a difference. It does look a little bit different, doesn't it? A little bit better. Can't see the corrugated tin and can't see the nails sticking down through the corrugated tin. Probably could go another coat, couldn't it? Doesn't really matter. Nobody looks up. We actually had a barbecue halfway through this job when the wood was actually exposed. And a whole bunch of people who come here quite often sat underneath it, had a barbecue. Nobody even noticed. <laughs> Nobody said, hey, what have you done there? Not one person. <laughs> anyway, there it was. More videos coming soon.